Okay, this is going to be the last part of a review between the DMK21 and the DMK41. Uh, both cameras made by the imaging source. And what I want to do is I want to go outside and uh, plug these cameras into my focuser into the telescope here and both at prime focus so I'll plug the DMK21 in first with my extension tube and we'll be at prime focus and I want to record for let's say let's do 30 seconds and then I'll take take that out and put in the 41 same thing uh, same section of the solar disk and I'll do the same thing for 30 seconds and then we'll take the frames that we gathered from both cameras into a program called auto stacker which is an, which is a stacking and aligning software for astrophotography and we'll see which camera produced a better quality graph meaning uh, the quality of the individual frames uh, and we'll see what kind of percentage we could keep from all the frames and basically you know the higher quality graph means all your frames are kind of equally in focus and, and not in not shimmering or not out of focus or you know um, due to atmospheric disturbances etc so the higher percentage of your quality graph the more frames we can keep therefore the better quality final stacked image and then what I want to do is go back out and instead of doing a, a set time period we'll do a frame limit let's say I think we'll do maybe a thousand frames so I'll do a thousand frames on the 21 and then a thousand frames on the 41 and then we'll compare the quality graph between keeping the frame limit constant and uh, yeah we'll see what camera can produce a better quality graph and um, I'm purely going to be doing solar this is my hydrogen alpha telescope um, I'm not going to be doing any kind of planetary or lunar comparison so for solar imaging this is the better review but maybe I'll try to get some lunar in, to, in tonight even though it's a pretty thin um, waxing crescent uh, just past the new moon here so uh, most likely this will be all solar but anyway let's go outside and uh, yeah see what kind of results we can produce Alrighty, I'm outside with the DMK21 plugged into the focuser. Uh, actually, my blocking filter, then the focuser, then the, the telescope. And uh, let's see what kind of results we can produce. Okay, so here we are outside, and I'm, I'm looking at a section of the solar disk. And there's actually not a lot going on, so there's a nice little prominence here. So I'm going to capture uh, the this northeastern quadrant of the sun. Uh, northeastern from my perspective. Um, and like I said, this is the DMK21 test, okay? And I'm going to keep the settings constant for the DMK41. Right now I have a gamma of 100 and an exposure of 1 625th of a second. Uh, now that exposure I might have to adjust a little bit with the DMK41, uh, but we will try to keep roughly the same settings. And so for the first test, um, let's capture we want to capture for 30 seconds so what I want to do is let's save this as DMK 21 30 second test and let's go to our options here let's stop recording after 30 seconds have a good focus and um, I'm using enough gamma so we can kind of get a combination of both surface detail and prominence and I think that would be a good all-around test so let's go ahead and capture uh, yes I want to okay so we're doing for 30 seconds and let's see in 30 seconds we should build a gather over a thousand frames yeah should about a, should build a gather about 2,000 frames in 30 seconds And the scene conditions are pretty even across the sky. There doesn't seem to be a lot of shift in the atmosphere. Atmosphere today, uh, it's kind of hazy. It's not perfect. Okay, so in 30 seconds, we gathered 1,779 frames. That let me switch over to the DMK41 and 
you should first be able to see the difference in the resolution and uh, we'll capture for 30 seconds. Okay, and now for the 41. Okay, and here's the DMK41. And you see right away, much bigger chip. I mean, look at the resolution. I mean, this is 1280 by 960, so we have much bigger field of view. Um, before, I was capturing this northeast quadrant right here. Now I can almost get a full disk. I can't quite get a full disk image, but I can get pretty close. Uh, but for the for the test, it's going to be difficult. Let's try to capture the same region. Um, let's just make sure to get that prominence within the test. Uh, let's do something like that. And let me adjust the Edelman's evenly illuminated surface here. I'm not necessarily going for um, image quality. I'm going for frame quality here. This is the main test. We're, we're trying to see... Uh, what camera is going to produce better frames in the given time period. So let me um, move this around a little bit. And I apologize for all the stuff on the sensor. Um, we're just going to have to ignore that. I don't have any cleaning solution. Okay, that's fine right there. Let's capture this. And just to note, the settings are the same. Our gamma is 100 and our exposure our exposure is 1 625th of a second. And let's go ahead and capture this. Let's name this MK41 30 second test. Our time limit is set to 30 seconds, and let's record. So my tracking is good. Uh, scene conditions are just about the same. And um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of junk on this camera lens because because I've used this one so much more. So, but don't worry about that. You know, just don't account. We're not. That's not going to uh, disturb our frame quality. Okay, so coming up on 30 seconds, and for some reason, the recording decided to stop at 25.3 seconds. Let's try this again. That was strange. Let's try this again. So most of you watching, like, well, I don't really need to see anymore because I can tell already. I mean, look at the bigger sensor here. Like, this is much better to, for my needs. Like, I need a, a bigger uh, sensor so I can do more of the solar disk at one time. But I still want to go ahead and take a look at that quality graph because that's I think is very important. Okay, there we go. So in 30 seconds, we gathered 448 frames, whereas with the DMK21, we gathered about 1,700. Uh, let's go into um, AutoStacker and compare these quality graphs. So the 21 looks like it starts off with a lot higher um, quality. Uh, the frames initially are really high, and that's pretty good. It's the kind of quality you want in terms of a distance from that 50% threshold horizontal line, but it looks like we're kind of getting crappy down here at the end. It might have been some tracking issues and some scene conditions. Um, the 41 looks a little more consistent, but less quality all around. It's a little closer and it's hugging that 50% threshold a little more. You kind of want it a little more tightly grouped like this up here. Uh, what you could do is try a different anchor point let's say like something on the surface and analyze that. Let's do this. Same thing. Let's do the same thing for the 41. Let's analyze. Let's use our something like, there we go, that element right there. Analyze that. We'll come back and see how this compares. Yeah, not much change, but you can see that uh, yeah, there wasn't much change there. What you do see, though, is the fact that it's just more, since there's a lot more frames in the 21, it's just more tightly packed up here. But it is higher up on that 50% threshold. Uh, the 41 is a little lower. So in general, I would say this quality graph is better. I'd rather work with this. And plus the fact that I have 1,794 frames. You know, I'm going to use 30%, and 30% of that many frames is roughly 500 and something, 530 frames. Whereas down here, 
with the DMK41, if I want to use 30%, which I wouldn't really use 30% with this kind of quality graph, well, I guess it's not too bad. It's above the 50% threshold. I could use 30% of my frames. But even at 30%, 30% of 449 is roughly 100-something frames. I think 130 frames, around 130 frames. So we're competing against a higher quality graph with 530 frames to a lower quality graph with 130 frames. Obviously, the DMK21 is going to produce a better looking image, but you might not care so much when you have this much field of view to work with. Okay, much bigger field of view. So, of course, it, there's, they both have their ups and downs, their pluses. Uh, but I would say, in general, I like the DMK21 better, purely because of that frame rate. I think it's going to produce a better, a crisper image. So I'm going to go ahead and process both of these images the same way, and then um, using 30% of them, 30% of the total frames. And um, we'll see which one looks better. But um, that's not really important. Uh, how I process, even if I process them the same way. What's important here is the quality graph. Uh, this doesn't really lie. You want to look at the quality graph. And um, I could try other programs like Registax or AVStack, but I guarantee you the 21 is going to give me a, a tighter grouped, uh, higher quality here, even though it looks like I do have a, a majority of a dip. But the green line, the kind of like the smooth, smoother line, uh, like the smooth series, I guess you could say, is a lot better than the than the 41 down here. See how it, it's a little lower? Let's look up here. It's, it stays much higher. Not much higher, but it is better. Ideally, you'd want this green line to stay up here the whole way and then dip down at the end. So anyways, folks, uh, I was going to do another test, but I'm running out of time here. So I'll just leave it at that for now. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, I can do some more kind of versus tests later. You know, maybe like put the DMK21 up against it, the 41 against planets, and then the moon. Get, get, get a more feel for the camera. But uh, I think you have a good idea of what I'm trying to say here. The frame rate looks like it gives you better quality. Uh, but if you want resolution, you, you know, there's 41 is your bet. Alrighty, folks. Uh, take care.